Hello, everybody. My name is Rob Maldonado. I am a freelance engineer and content creator based out of South Florida. Um, before that, I worked for a SolidWorks reseller where I was an elite applications engineer, and basically I taught all core SolidWorks classes. So I would best describe myself as a SolidWorks generalist. So yeah, there, those are your key takeaways. So we're gonna build this one step at a time. So as I mentioned uh, just a few minutes ago, you know, we're operating off a basic understanding of SolidWorks and some of the, some of the tools. Basically, if you've taken the uh, essentials class, you should be good for this presentation. But we're gonna start by discussing what it means to have a BREP model in SolidWorks to put this model together and how is it connected because that's gonna be really important when we deal with these mesh files. Then we're also gonna go over how to directly edit mesh technique, uh, directly edit mesh files with new features that were introduced in SOLIDWORKS 2020. I was really, really excited when I heard th uh, those were being included. And then if that fails, you know, I'll show you some more advanced surfacing uh, techniques, or it doesn't have to be surfacing, but more techniques of how to pull the geometry out of the mesh in order to get something that's fairly accurate. So yeah, there's me. Like I said, freelance engineer. I describe myself as a SOLIDWORKS generalist. I always try and learn new things and, um, try, and, and try and be as well-rounded as possible. So handle a couple of different concepts, but one is, you know, mesh conversions. I have a YouTube channel, so we're a small group, uh, about uh, 1,300 subscribers. It's a small group, but my subscribers are the best. They're, they're, all, <laughs> they're always uh, interacting, so if you wanna be part of that community, feel free to subscribe to that uh, YouTube channel. And also, if you're looking to get your certification, I am a total nerd for, for that as well. And I have uh, uh, videos to help you to get your uh, associate exam if that's what you're in for or the professional. And actually, I'm in the middle of editing the surfacing, uh, the surfacing tips video. You know, just things that I learned from taking it, failing it the first time, and then I took it again and passed it. But yeah, um, if, you, if you recognize me, you might uh, know me as the sicko who models something every single day and then posts it to social media. So I've been doing this for a little over three months now. And those, those, those on the bottom are my uh, past entries for uh, you know, just a couple days ago. So just because I'm busy doesn't mean I can skip on my model of the day. I will always find a way to make it work. And um, yeah, or if you like SOLIDWORKS memes and, and jokes and stuff like that, feel free to follow me for that purpose as well. It's just a good time. All right, so. Raise your hand if you've found a mesh file from any of the following sites. We have GrabCAD, definitely. It's, you, know, a lot, you can find a lot, lot of stuff there, but quality is very suspect sometimes. We have Thingiverse, who's pulled out files from there. Yegi, maybe? How about TurboSquid? What about the models resource? Models resource is an interesting one because that is where a lot of video game models live. So there are like a community of people that like to rip the 3D models out of video games and then uh, provide it. You know, either people like to animate with it or I've pulled models from there to 3D print and you know, do, do cool stuff with. So we'll, we'll check that, we'll check out a, a model from, uh, a couple models from there. All right, so what is a mesh file? A mesh file is uh, basically a, model file that is made up of all flat triangles, pretty much. You have this tessellated shape that comes together to uh, form a shape. Now, these are kind of a nightmare, right? So as compared to our regular geometry, so the regular SOLIDWORKS geometry, the features, um, we call that BREP geometry, boundary representation, if you wanna be um, verbose about it. But yeah, it's the stuff that we, you know, we all know and love, and, it's uh, p very powerful because um, it n not only will SOLIDWORKS generate the geometry from these, uh, uh, from these features, but it also keep the surface data hidden away under the hood. 
and that's what makes SolidWorks so powerful versus um, a model, model or like uh, versus Blender or Autodesk Maya where that is mostly based on meshes. You know SolidWorks if you uh, extrude a cube out and you pick an edge to fill it, SolidWorks knows hey those two flat fa faces are connected at an edge and that edge I can bridge with a little round. Blender has a hard time doing that or it's like more tricky to do that. SolidWorks it's all built in into the surface data. So um, other types of files that have this you know uh, this uh, surface data of is um, parasolid files which is x underscore t or x underscore b, practically no difference between them. Step and IGES files, they're, they're, uh, those are what, what are considered the dumb solids, right? You import a step file and it has no history. So those can be kind of difficult to deal with. But mesh files are a special kind of difficult because with step and IGES files you still have that surface data in there so even though you might not have a, a, a history of a, a file tree, um, you could still offset surfaces, you can still um, use them for reference so if you say extrude up to surface you can click the, the, the face of a, a step file and it'll work. Yeah and, and most other competitive parametric modeling CAD packages will use this kind of a feature. Mesh are made, meshes are made of small planar elements and that surface data is completely devoid. And the ones to look out for of course there's our old friend the STL, you know it's probably the most common one, but um, also is VRML and OBJ files. You'll find the OBJ files on um, the models resource where you know I was talking about the video game files, those are in OBJ, SOLIDWORKS opens those um, natively which is kind of cool. All right, so Let's talk about geometry and topology. It's a little confusing if you've heard those terms before, but here's the breakdown. Uh, geometry is the specific shapes of the models that you create. And the topology is how those shapes are connected together. So if you look at the two, uh, the two figures there, geometrically they are different. You know, one is just, uh, a slab and the other one look, appears to be egg carton foam. Topologically they are identical, they're the same. There are six faces, you know, put together in like a kind of cube formation. And by, uh, and by keeping this in the back of our head, you know, I'll bring this back up when we're doing a little bit of a, when we get into the, into the demo, that's how we can be successful in, you know, getting the mesh files to do what we want. And uh, among those different types of surfaces that you can see, um, on the left hand side we have, you know, what, what is most associated with, uh, what, what is most associated with regular prismatic looking parts, the algebraic geometry. So that is our flat planar, sur flat planar surface, spherical, cylindrical, and actually toroidal is technically uh, an algebraic surface, that's the, that's a donut pretty much. Um, ruled is a surface that you can draw a straight line to through. It, it becomes more relevant in surfacing when you uh, offset surfaces off each other. You want to connect them. Maybe you're making like a grip with like a, with like a recess or an emboss. A ruled surface can come in handy to connect, be the little sidewalls pretty much. And then NURBS is everything else. Those are the, the nightmare ones where it's just, uh, SOLIDWORKS basically has a bunch of curves it keeps track of under the hood and it basically merges all of them together. All right, so I know you didn't sign up for this. It's way too late. I didn't ask for the last slot, all right, man, but uh, you know, let's, let's test our knowledge here. So here's my mouse. So what do we suppose this surface is? Planar, right? Come on, you can, you can show a little more energy than that. Fine, I'll give you a more tricky one. What about this one? That is a conical face, correct. And who here did the model mania this year? You have a few of us? All right, who was able to immediately recognize that the top of that surface was conical? And yeah, that, that, that was pretty tricky. I, I was talking to some people, threw some people off. And um, when you are able to identify these kinds of, uh, these kinds of geometry, 
Um, it, it not only you know makes you know model mania easier, but um, it'll become relevant because, uh, as we'll find out here in a second, we are able to put pull out different types of geometry from meshes. So that is a conical. Um, what about this one? This little fillet face. Whoops. Well, the, the, this little one right above it. This one's a tough one. That is a toroidal face. If you extend that out like that and then close off the bottom, it becomes a donut. And um, of course, you know, you jumped your cue a little bit, but little buddy. But NURBS is basically every, uh, every other thing. So that's practically, I would say, every surface in this little guy, except maybe the cheek. That looks pretty flat. But yeah. NURBS surfaces you have to do with uh, classical surfacing techniques with um, loft and boundary surface. We won't get that deep into the weeds in, in, in it today, but it's just to really lay out a framework. All right. So far so good? All right. So now for the real fun stuff. We are presented with a mesh file. What do we do with it? If this was SOLIDWORKS 2016 or 2017, not very much options, right? Maybe cry. But we're at SOLIDWORKS 2020, and the story's a little bit different now. So what do we want to do? Two options, mainly. So option one is that we now have tools to directly edit a mesh file without having to do any conversions. Think about it. If it's a, it's a, it's a battle that you don't have to fight, and that just and that is just a lot faster if you can just get the work done immediately. The, so it's quick and dirty, but the unfortunate bit is that you're only, um, you're only allowed to use a certain set of commands. And you know, I'll have a list in a, in a later slide here. But you know, if you want to download something from, from Thingiverse, Yegi, or something like that, and it's like, oh, this thing is cool, but I need to shell it out, or something like that, you can just go option one and Ideally, it should be pretty quick. Option two, on the other hand, is a little bit more involved. That is the actual uh, mesh conversion where you're using a surface from mesh to bring those types of geometry out from the mesh file. And you can use uh, either regular features or surface, surfacing techniques to bring them together. So if you're doing something quick and dirty, you know, uh, 3D print for fun and you just need to change a little thing about it, I would definitely try option one. Option two, you use when option one fails. Or if you expect the file to be um, referenced by a whole bunch of different other files. So let's say that you get um, data from a, a vendor and you have to make mold tooling from it. That it's gonna start to affect many other different parts that might actually be worth the time it takes to convert that into a regular file. But, you know, let's try option one. Does anyone recognize this model? This is a tricky one. All right, so I was part of the 3D Experience for Good hackathon. This is actually a thumb that I used to create a prosthetic hand. Should have brought it out. But that whole thing, when you fold it onto itself, becomes one of these. You see, there's a thumb here. So you take that and you fold it onto itself and it becomes this thumb and then you can actually, you know, put down a grip and then release it. It's pretty cool. So I was working on this project and, you know, let's say that I sent this file to 3D print like maybe four weeks ago, you know, a couple weeks go by and I need to 3D print it again, except this time with some, ch with some changes. Maybe I need to change uh, the, the thickness of that inner cutout. Maybe I need to add a tab or something like that. So let's see what it takes to, oops. Let's see what it takes to edit it. So here's something. So here I'm in my MarkForge Iger. So this is actually what I use to 3D print my prototype with. So let's say that I lost the original file. You know, my computer crashed, fell in a lake, burst into flames, whatever story you want to come up with. And I need to get that file and I need to modify it. Well, my, the 3D printer software that I use actually saves all the parts in history 
and lets you download them, which is pretty cool. So there you go, I've downloaded the STL, but that's all I have. You know, this is the point where if I was in 2016, I would kind of cry, right? But you know, let's open this up in SOLIDWORKS and see what we can do with it. And actually, let's see if I can get, yeah, so what I did there is I did the click and drag functionality and I needed to see options. So a cool little trick is that if you hold down the alt key and you click and drag, it'll actually open the options dialog. If you don't hold alt the alt key, it'll just open with whatever options you have. So that's a, a neat little thing. And so, let me see what options I have here. Let's look at what we have. All right, so import. Let me take a closer look at that. Oop, maybe not that close. Well, that's fine, I guess. All right, we have three options. Import as a solid body, surface body, or graphics body. 99% of the time, I just leave it on graphics body. There's a reason for this. Um, SOLIDWORKS 2020 also came with a new feature that allows you to deal with overly large STL files. So who here has gotten an STL file, dragged it into SOLIDWORKS, and then it says, there's a lot of facets in this. Yeah, I know, right? So that is, you know, very commonly, very commonly encountered in Thingiverse, in GrabCAD, and the reason for that is, you know, people think they need the maximum resolution ever to make their uh, basic 3D print of a brick, you know, come out. So what happens if, if there's a curve, since mesh files are only allowed to have flat faces, it puts like a billion flat faces in order to make a very smooth curve. Except that bogs everything down. If you import it as a graphics body, you actually have an option to tone it down a little bit. So I'll show you what I mean. So the, 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 that STL that I have for you isn't very um, daunting at all, but you know, let's just suppose it is. So opening on graphics, should make it open right up. Even for larger STLs, the, the difference is um, when it opens as graphics, it doesn't load, uh, it doesn't load practically any information other than just how the triangles look. SOLIDWORKS loads extra information when it loads it in as a solid mesh file body. So yeah, you can see here that, you know, this thing is quite detailed, right? It's not really slowing down my system, but let's say it is. So d does anyone know the name of the command that I would use for this? Because, yeah, so I, so I did before and SOLIDWORKS didn't have it. So the command we're looking for here is called decimate. So decimate is, is when you take a mesh file and basically just reduce the triangle count. And actually the way I used to do it is I used to have Blender on my machine. So I would just kick an STL file over to Blender and literally only use it for decimating, you know, just taking it down the number of the triangles and then kick it back to SOLIDWORKS. But now SOLIDWORKS has it built in, which is very nice. So the way you access that is you can open up your graphics bodies folder like that. You can right click on where it says graphics closed and that's one way to find it. You can also search for it and it also lives on the ribbon somewhere, but that's the way I like to access it. So decimate. So here, it gives you the entire facet count here. So there's 4,000 facets, which is nothing at all, which is, you know, much weren't running pretty well, but, you know, I've seen uh, files with hundreds of thousands of facets, and that's where this tool be definitely becomes a little bit more useful. All right, so as far as reducing this, we'll go to these two boxes here. These two boxes drive each other. You type in one, and the other one will change. So you could say, oh, I just want to cut the number of facets in half, so I would just type 50%, or maybe I'm going for a specific target, maybe like 2,000. So if I type in 2,000, and I just hit tab, then you could see like the percent value updated just like that. All right, that uh, box where it says epsilon, that is the maximum error that is allowed to happen in your decimation. Of course, if you're decimating it, you're reducing the number of facets, but you still want it to be true to the model. So that allows you to control how close that is. Um, a fraction of a millimeter, that's pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is hit calculate and see, and see what, what it gives me. So it says ma maximum deviation is too small to complete the decimation. So basically with, it, I'm specifying way too few triangles and it quite can't, it can't get it done. Maybe let's try 3,000, 3,000. 
So only a 24% reduction. All right, and it looks like it did it there. So if you look in this area, you know it was like very, before it was like very dense with uh, triangles. Now it's just a little bit less dense and uh, now it should perform better on the machine when we convert it to a mesh file. All right, so let's start playing around with this thing. But before we do that, we need to convert it to an actual solid body. So the reason I uh, imported it as a graphics body is to have the opportunity to decimate if need be. All right, but now that I have it the way I like, I'm gonna right click on the line item and say convert to mesh body. All right, so if this was a regular SOLIDWORKS body, this mesh refinement thing would be available, but since it's already a mesh, you know, I can't control the number of facets because it's already meshed. I'm just converting it to a body so SOLIDWORKS understands it a little bit better. I'll hit okay. All right, so I have something like this. So let's see the first thing here. Let, let's say that the first thing I wanna do is remove this internal hole or something like that. I have a really neat trick that we can do and I'll just really quickly show you in like a new part where, you know, I'll get that, maybe that. I don't really care about fully defining right now. And I'll just bring that up into an extrusion. So let's say we had this as an imported part. I want to get rid of the hole, and I have no way of de deleting it from the feature tree because it just says imported. Pretty neat trick you can use is a command called delete face, and that likes to live in the surfaces tab. Or you can search for it. So delete face, we can specify delete and patch. And delete and patch. So if I take that face and delete it, it's gonna, of course, well, delete that face and it's gonna patch it over. The question is, with what does it patch it over? Well, with the surrounding geometry, it closes up that hole. And that's the whole genius of having all the surface data under the hood in SOLIDWORKS. Since SOLIDWORKS knows that's a plane, it just says, oh, when there's a hole there, you just extend the equation for a plane and it just covers up the hole. So if I hit delete and patch, the hole disappears. Pretty neat. Uh, but let's, oh yeah, for sure. If I section that, it's completely solid. So before, after. Yep, it, it closes it off on both sides. If SOLIDWORKS can't close it off and make it back into a solid body, it'll just throw an error. Just saying like, uh, yeah, the, the, the typical bad geometry error or whatever. All right, let's try it with this. So what, what is really cool is that you can actually use delete face on mesh files. So let's try it out here. So delete face, if I click that, huh, that's strange. It's selecting the whole thing. And hmm, if I do that, it just gives me an error. All right, so what's going on here is that the topology is incorrect. So you notice when I click on this whole thing, it just thinks that it's hi highlighting the whole thing because it thinks it's one giant face, one giant unbroken face with just a few holes in it. When that's not what we want, I want a top face that is connected to the side face connected to this bottom face. And there's gotta be like an edge so that SOLIDWORKS knows that they are connected. How do we fix this? Well, that is when we actually get into our mesh modeling tab. Oh, it's in there. Oh, it was right there. Um, and we use this segment, uh, segment imported mesh body. It's grayed out because you need a pre-selection for this one. So if I pre-select it, the command becomes available. All right, let me rotate it like that. Segment. So, so what SOLIDWORKS will do is it'll try to be smart in how the angles of the mesh facets go together and we'll try to guess where those edges are. So you can see in yellow, those are where it thinks edges should be. And that's looking pretty good. Um, I couldn't try to increase the tolerance to see if it can recognize that fillet face, but I don't really have to edit, edit that, so I'll just leave it as is. What's important is that SOLIDWORKS knows that this top face is separate from this inner face 
which is separate from the bottom face. So let's do that. All right, and now you can see it looks just a bit different. So instead of all the facet edges being gray, you have now a black edge, because now the topology has changed. So that's all I need for right now. Oop, that's one of those. Gave me the push pin. All right, so now let's try our delete face command again. So go into our surfaces, our delete face. So if I click that, uh, you notice our delete and patch option disappeared. Currently, delete and patch is not supported with mesh bodies, but there's still a relatively easy way to get around that. So what I'm gonna do is just delete them regularly like that. And what this does is it turns this into a mesh surface body where there's nothing on the inside anymore and it's just, the inside is just open to the environment. So what we have to do now is plug up these holes. You can see a little bit a light blue edge. Well, now it's orange because I'm hovering over it. Light blue means it's an open surface that should be closed if you want it to be a solid. So how do we close it up? Well, a trick that you can do in regular surfaces is that if you click the open edge and then hit the delete key, you get the delete holes option. And actually, I think this was something they added in 2019 or 2020, they added its own button. So you can also search delete hole and access it that way. But I'm just used to it this way. So if I hit okay, patch that part away, and we just have to rinse and repeat for the other side. So click that and click delete. All right, now it's all together. But if I section it, it's the graphics mesh feature. Yeah, we'll notice that it is, oops, we'll notice that it is uh, hollow on the inside. Oh, I didn't even move the section plane. Yeah, you can, you can see there, it's, it's hollow on the inside. And you, if you look on the left hand side to verify, yeah, this is still a surface body. And this is a question I get a lot when I taught my surfacing classes. Well, if you already have a closed volume and SOLIDWORKS doesn't know that it's a, a solid, it still thinks it's a surface, what can you do? Well, the key here is in the thicken command. So thicken actually has a little special ability that if you feed it a surface that is already enclosed, you'll get this create solid from enclosed volume checkbox. And I wish that was a little bit more discoverable. It's, it's like a hidden secret of SOLIDWORKS and it really shouldn't be. But anyway, here we are. That's why I'm telling you about it. I, you would think so, but if you try, you would get a, yeah, yeah, you would say can't knit a surface to itself. So you need at least two bodies to knit surface. So yeah, I thought of that about, about that too the first time. So this has to be thickened specifically. No, Thicken has been around for a while now, at least since I started using it back in 2015. Yeah. Using it this way. Using it this way. Oh, that's a good question. I want to say it's been around for a while, but I discovered it like two years ago or something like that because it's just so hard to find. I don't know why it's like that, but, you know, that's why you come to things like this to discover the, the secrets, right? Okay, so... Just like that, if my only goal was to just get rid of that hole and send it back to the printer, I can actually just save this STL and be done with my job. But let's play around with this just a little bit more. So let's try this. How about we shell this fingertip out? So what I can do, I'm going to bring a new plane. Let's do it out like that. So I did control click and drag and that brings you a new plane out of thin air. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that finger bit off so I can shell it on its own. So this is pretty cool. If I hit okay. And these fe this feature that I'm gonna do is, was added in SOLIDWORKS 2018. So if I go to, I want direct editing. Direct editing, there we go. Who knows about the split and combine commands? Yeah, split and combine are where you, you know, bring bodies together or split them apart. That was, that was added as a functionality along with mesh bodies in 2018, so you can actually use them here. So I'm just going to use the split command, say cut part, 
click on the one thing. It might be grabbing that a little bit, but I can combine it later. Let me make sure consume cut is off. And okay. And now I have this that is separated from the rest of my part. So we can just take a look at that. So yeah, now if I want to give that like a different shell thickness, that is actually a feature that is supported for in mesh body 2020. So the fact that you can open up shell, you know, type in a value, maybe like two millimeters or something like that, click a face and then hit OK. Check that out. It's shelled. I don't even have to convert it to a BREP geometry. What else can we do? That's kind of fun. Um, fillets and chamfers. As long as you have the topology correct and that SOLIDWORKS recognizes that there's an edge there, you can do fillets and chamfer. So let's try that out right now. Chamfer. Uh, maybe a one millimeter chamfer. It's going to have to be pretty small. But if I do that, oh yeah, no preview. The classic no preview. Whenever I see the preview disappear, I get worried. But yeah, you can select edges just like that. And now my, my mesh file has chamfers on it. Isn't, isn't that really cool? So it's like relatively little work to get those kinds of changes. But of course we have to be careful when we split, uh, split parts like that. And actually just to make it look like before, I'll add the other side in the shell like that. There we go. So now we have something along the lines of that. You gotta be careful when you go into multi bodies in STLs, especially when working with 3D printers. Because if I threw this to any of my 3D printers, my Sindo machine or my Mark Forge machine, it would actually construct extra walls where one body meets the other. Because it thinks that's the end of the part, but they just so happen to be touching. So that can change how the the, the part performs under stress and strain or, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, at the least it'll use, might use a little bit more material and take a little bit more time. So just make sure that if you intend to just send it to the printer as one piece that the solid bodies folder here says one. So we are going to do a combine command which is found under direct editing. And you have something like that. And of course I could, you know, keep playing around with this stuff here. Oh, one more thing. So in, in my design here for the prosthetic, um, later in the design cycle, um, you know, we have like the flick to release mechanism, but sometimes that binds up and you need another way to pull out the mechanism. So I need like a little tab here for the user to be able to switch. Well now that's kind of a pain because, you know, you know, B-Rep geometry and meshes, they're incompatible, right? So you would think. But in SOLIDWORKS 2020, that is, that, that connection is very much bridged, I say, I would say. So SOLIDWORKS considers this as one face and it is a flat face. And what can you do to flat faces? You can sketch on them. So if you notice, if I click this face, you know, the sketch, little sketch icon is missing. But if I click this face, ooh, you can sketch directly on mesh faces. All right, so let's do a, uh, I'm sorry, was that a question? Oh, all right. So, yeah, let's do a little sketch here. Uh, let's, uh, let's just bring this into view about Z. Sure, let's do that. And I'm just going to keep it real simple. Let's see if I, maybe someone turned the snaps off. So I should be able to, oh, because this is all, yeah, this is all, it's considering it as a complex spline curve. So I, I, I can't do that. So a couple ways to tackle the problem. I could keep, I could go back to, um, I could go back to uh, segment mesh body and see if I can get it to split the flat faces up. But I'm just going to keep this demonstration simple and just simply overbuild it. I'm just going to make sure that it at least intersects itself. And I'm also just going to be very lazy and just say fully defined sketch. There we go. That practice isn't going to annoy anybody. <laughs> so let's exit that sketch. And if we extrude, 
maybe up to, can I say up to surface? It doesn't, doesn't quite like up to surface. I think the value was, yeah, I could, I could measure that. Yeah, I, I, I thought there was a uh, up to surface. I was mistaken. I apologize. But, uh, you know, we can have that just a little bit. Yeah, actually, that's a good idea. Let's try up to vertex. Is there any vertex for me? No, it just doesn't like it. Well, I'm just going to leave it like that for right now because um, I just want to show you that if I hit OK, all right, for some reason it was, I think this was a bug in the, in the earlier versions. And it was patched, and I think it was unpatched. Because what it's, what it's trying to do is it's trying to combine a B-rep and mesh model. But that's OK. I have a workaround. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to tell SOLIDWORKS, don't combine it quite yet. Uncheck merge result. We're just going to do the conversion. So you can see that's just regular SOLIDWORKS geometry. I can right click on the boss extrude and just convert that into a mesh body. And then now we should be able to uh, combine them together. Direct editing, combine, add. And there you have something like that that you can kick over to your 3D printer. And, you know, with relatively little effort, there's a lot you can do with these mesh files without even having to really convert them. Are there any questions about that? All right, so let's see. Running a little low on time here. So I'm just going to move on a little bit. But if I go here, so basic, uh, uh, basic uh, overview. I like to import as a graphics body to be able to decimate if need be. You make sure that the topology is correct before you try any of these fancy features, or more likely than not, they'll fail. And the supported features, the exo I think the, the exhaustive list, actually, not even exhaustive, because um, I got that from the What's New 2020 guide, but Thicken is not in there, and you clearly saw, I demonstrated in front of you all, Thicken is, <laughs> is viable for this. But those are most of the features that are now supported. A lot of cool ones, so you can add draft and stuff like that, and yeah, good stuff. All right, so we are presented with a mesh file. How about we try option two? where for some reason or another, we have, to, we have to directly convert it. Yeah, it looks like I'm running kind of low on time, but you know, at least I'll just show you the kind of framework to start. All right, so you know, I have another mesh file, and I'll go ahead and convert it to BREP. Does anyone know what this model's from? Does it look familiar to anybody? All right, how about if I texture it? Does that look familiar now? Okay, it's, it's from a video game. It's from Team, Team Fortress 2. It's the, the intelligence briefcase. So this was um, from uh, the model's resource. And, you know, this, this presentation will be posted at, on the SOLIDWORKS website. I have the little link in the, at the bottom right if you want to follow that. And that, that site is super fun to explore, by the way. It's awesome. All right, and that, w w I saved that if we have time, but I don't think we will. But let's try this. All right, so I'll just close this out. And this too, don't need that. Okay, and I have, I have the briefcase already imported here. So we have something like that, and because I have the setting to import as graphics, it, excuse me, it, do, it j does just that. But this time, there's a little bit more stuff to sort through. Um, yeah, this, this thing can be uh, a little bit annoying. I wish there was the ability to rename them just to um, b become a little bit or more organized, but I digress. So what I see is if I click on the first one, that is the main briefcase there. So that's what we'll work on. What, what we'll do is with, uh, with surfaces, let's, like, let's try and recreate maybe this corner here, just to keep it simple. So first, I should be able to Hide all of this. Maybe select all of them. Oh, hide. There it is. 
and then show this one. So that's the basic briefcase with all, all, all the little features in there. All right, so what about creating this corner? And that's where we have to go back to that uh, skills that we just developed during our quiz. We have to look around our model and try to identify the types of surfaces that we have in, in here. So this is looking fairly flat. So I'm gonna assume that this is a planar surface. Same thing for this side here where my mouse is hovering and same thing for this side. If I look at this, you can see that it's kind of filleted. I'm gonna assume that those are cylindrical faces. So what is really cool about, um, I believe this was added in 2019 or 2020. There, there's, a side, there's a slide that enumerates exactly which, um, which features went where. But if I go to my mesh modeling tab, we have this really cool feature called surface from mesh. And that is how you can convert geometry directly from the mesh into a BREP surface. So let's take her out for a spin. Surface from mesh, and it's one of those where it's, um, the push pin is down automatically, and that's because it assumes that you, just, you wanna add many of them at once and then start to work on them. All right, so if we pull this out here, you can see currently supported are only four types of, um, there's only four types of surfaces, of algebraic surfaces. We have our plane, we have a sphere, a cylinder, and a conic. Notice torus is not in there. So that means if we have a fillet around a, a circular edge, things get a little bit more complicated. And actually, I'm gonna assume that's what this is, since this fillet over here seems to be a little bit larger than this one. That's why you get this little effect instead of this meeting up at a corner. So that is kind of a toroidal face, and you know, what do I do about that? Well, I'll show you. So first, let's get what's easy. Just start with the easy stuff. Let's start with the planar surface, and the way that this tool works is that you feed it a whole bunch of facets, and then you say, with, with these selected, try and fit a planar surface to it, or a sphere, or et cetera. So, here I only have like four facets, and maybe I could, you, you don't have to pick a, a lot either. Here I only have four to pick, so it's not that bad. Um, but for something like this, now there's smaller ones, and there, there might be even more. It'll be, become more relevant in, during the, uh, when I'm getting a cylinder out, where it might be a bunch of faces. There is this paint select tool that if you click on it, you know, will give you this little bubble thing. And if I click and drag across those facets, it'll select them. But make sure to hit okay here. So it's kind of like the selection manager that you bring it up and it's waiting for you to accept the selection. So hit okay. So planar with that facet group and I'll hit calculate. All right, and looks like it's generated um, a surface for me there. So I could actually keep going, but I'm gonna pause here just a moment to take a closer look at that. So if I hit X, there should be, oops, I didn't accept it, so let me just do that real quick. Okay. So like that, okay, calculate, yes. There we go, forgot to hit the, so if I hide that, you can see that it's given me a planar surface contouring to those, uh, contouring to those um, other features. So you notice that it's got a bunch of weird holes in it and stuff like that. An easy way to get rid of those is actually, if you go to surfaces, the untrim command. So untrim surface, you click a surface and it can uh, seal up all those holes. Or ideally, that's the, that's the plan. Okay, I guess I had to extend it out a little bit. So, un, so if you get you know, a weird surface that has a bunch of weird jagged geometry, just kick it over to untrimmed surface and it cleans it right up. And basically, we're gonna uh, rinse and repeat until we have that corner. Except, if I go here, 
It's going to be interesting to bridge this together. So it might be tempting to, you know, start with the planer up top and then this is a cylindrical and you saw we can bring out cylindrical faces from this. So bring out the cylindrical and then bring out the, the vertical face and then knit them together. Sounds pretty reasonable, right? Except you notice that when I converted them, they had really jagged edges and that does not tend to knit well. And plus, we have a toroidal face that we don't really know what to do. So instead of trying to convert every single face, try and create the overall corner and then use the regular SOLIDWORKS geometry to create the fillets. We already have a fillet tool that can create that geometry for us. So what I'm going to do is just create two more planar faces. So mesh modeling, surface from mesh, plane, paint select, grab those, okay, calculate, okay, and I'm just going to do one more. So paint select, I don't even, it's literally two faces. I am that lazy, I guess. Hit calculate, it brings us that face. Hit OK. And we have something like that. And now to patch the corner together, we just need to take those surfaces and extend them until they all meet together. So the tool I like to use for that actually is, again, untrimmed surface. This reason solely because you can actually extend multiple bodies at once, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, with extend surface, you can only affect one body at one time. Yeah, so we have now a bunch of garbage that we need to trim away. So trim surface, mutual, Oop. between this, this, and this. And I want to keep this, this, and this. If I hit OK, there we go. We've recreated we've recreated that corner so that we can play around with it. So I was playing around with this earlier and these uh, uneven edges tend to mess with the fillet so I'm just going to quickly trim that away. Like that. I'll just quickly get a rectangle since we're low on time here and we'll say trim this is a standard trim because we have a sketch and hit keep. All right, so, but what do we do about the fillets? So I'd like to add a fillet now, except I don't know the size of it, right? If I bring back the graphics body, show, if I bring back the graphics body, I can't just like click it and then it just tells me the little radius on the, on the status bar, right? Because it's all flat faces. But recall, we can actually create the cylindrical faces anyway, so watch this. If I go to my mesh modeling, surface from mesh, this time I'm going to switch it to cylindrical, get my paint select, and grab maybe those faces, hit calculate, Ooh, that's, that's the sneaky bit, I forgot to hit OK. There you go, facet group, calculate. All right, so it's found me a cylindrical surface, I'll hit OK. Actually, I want one more. So I want to measure this one because it seems to be slightly larger than the other side ones. So paint select, although, so this is where paint select comes in really handy, especially for fillet faces. Hit OK. And now we have those two faces like that. We hide the graphics body again. And now, watch this, if I just click on it, it tells me the radius, so 0.066 inches. So this game model is actually pretty small, so it might need a scale at the end, but that's, you know, that, that's um, not exactly relevant to what we're doing here. But if I go to the trim surface here, now I have the information I need to actually fill it. In. So actually, I need to be reminded. So 0.074. I'm going to round that 0.075. So if I click this edge and say fill it, 075, like that. And then there's a little thing. I grab that and that was 
0.066. And I can grab that, 0.066. So you see how it's kind of like recreating the look of that corner? Hit OK, and I'm going to hide that away. Also that. And if I show the graphics body, yeah, you can see it's, it's kind of close. This top surface might actually be a little bit cylindrical, actually. Like, it's, it's bowing ever so slightly. So that might be something I want to try again. So instead of making that top surface planar, specify it as a cylinder and basically rinse and repeat. What's really nice is that if you go into evaluate, um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do a body compare. Let's see. If I say body compare, this is a new feature, body compare. If you do a mesh conversion and you put the mesh versus the um, resultant body, it'll actually tell you the deviation between the surfaces and see if it's sufficient or maybe needs a little bit more work. So let me see that with that. Compare bodies. Let's see if that wants to, oh no, I want that with this. Okay, so we have the legend here. We can adjust how, uh, how tight the legend goes. But basically, let's, let's uh, zoom into this for a sec. Anything that's blue is, or uh, anything that's blue is greater than uh, 0.160 thousandths of an inch away from each other. And this is, uh, again, 160,000, but in the opposite directions, inset. So basically, the green faces are faces that are really close, because they're, that's the zero. So green faces are really close. Red faces means that it's going underneath by that amount, which makes sense, because I, I made the note that it's like bowing up a little bit, so the planar surface is going underneath it. So it makes sense why that would show up as red. And this shows up as blue because actually it's an entirely different feature. It's got these little two little rib thingies that um, I didn't, I neglected to model. So of course that would be very different. But that's basically the, the technique and you would just keep going until you seal off the model in its entirety. Yeah, I'm just about out of time, wow. So I just want to finish this off. Those are, um, the basic stuff I wanted to show. Oops, if I can, there we go. Yeah, I wanted to do this one too. Anyone know, know what, anyone, anyone know what this model is? This is called the Utah teapot and it was actually, it's actually one of the oldest mesh files ever because when they invented ray tracing back in the 80s, they needed a cool model to try and see how the algorithms worked. And so the University of Utah digitized a, a teapot, a professor did, that had this on his desk. So I kind of did that with the same thing, but here's our, our little overview of uh, what I, basically what I did here. You know, make sure it's decimated, so you can use surface from mesh to extract those. And those, if you want to take a quick picture of that, those are all the features with respect to the release of SolidWorks. If you, you, if you work with a lot of mesh files, definitely you want to be in 2020. But you can do some stuff in 2018 if you're held to that. 2018 is the first year where the mesh body appears, I believe. Yeah, so I'll have additional exercises at that web address if you want. Or honestly, just go onto those sites and pick out a cool model and, you know, try it out for yourself. And with that, you know, I'll, I'll open up the floor to questions. Anything at all? Yeah, I find that scan to 3D can be a little bit uh, finicky with how it tries to guess what surfaces there are. Uh, this method, I would say, is a little bit slower than scan to 3D, but it's more um, robust. Like it works more of the time. Like, like scan to 3D is kind of like a you know, shot in the dark kind of thing. Like if it works, it works, then hooray, but you know, if not, then you have these. Anything else? Yeah, but by the way, to repeat that gentleman's question, it's like what's the difference between this and the scan to 3D functions?
just for the, the recording. And with that, that's it. You know, feel free to come up to me, you know, grab a business card, or I actually have stickers of all my CAD models of the day. So, you know, feel free to take as much of those as you want because this is the last, this is the last day. And thank you so much. You've been a great crowd.